iPadOS 15 has just been released to the public, and you're probably about to update and are wondering what new features are available. This video is for you. I'll give you a quick and short overview of all the new things available in iPadOS 15. So let's get straight into it. Let's start off with the home screen. Just like on your iPhone, you can add widgets anywhere on your home screen, so you can customize it even more to your liking. For the iPads, there's a brand new large widget size like these. The app library also makes an appearance for iPad, finally bringing over all the neat categorization of all your apps. There's new enhancements to the app switcher. If you've got apps open, you can create a multitasking window in the app switcher by just dragging an app over another one, like this. There's also enhancements to the multitasking menu, so instead of all the confusing swiping, at the top of every full screen window, you'll find these three dots with three options. One to make the app go full screen, one to make it hover, and another to bring it into split view. There's also a new shelf where you can view all the open windows for an app and quickly switch between them. You can even add and close windows. Next up, we've got improvements to notes. Now, you can organize and tag using hashtags and there's also quick notes. Using the Apple Pencil, if you drag up from the lower right corner, you'll create a new quick note where you can draw, add text or links, and these can all be viewed in the notes app. If you've got a keyboard, holding down the command key now shows you all the keyboard shortcuts available. iPadOS 15 also gets the new FaceTime features that come with iOS 15, like SharePlay that allows you to share your screen and watch or listen to movies and music together with your friends. If you've got a FaceTime room full of people, you'll be able to hear them from different places on your screen with spatial audio. And there's also a new grid view. You can now schedule FaceTime meetings in the calendar and make FaceTime calls to friends and family who might have Android or Windows devices. During a FaceTime call, there's three new mic modes. One default normal one, and then voice isolation and wide spectrum. Voice isolation minimizes background noise and puts your voice front and center. And when the music or sounds around you are just as important as what you've got to say, wide spectrum leaves the ambient sound unfiltered. There's also a new option to turn on portrait mode during the call which blurs the background very well. The Messages app has also received some improvements. When you send a bunch of images, instead of fully populating the chat, it forms a nice stack that you can swipe through. There's also a new feature called Shared With You. For example, if someone sends you a link, when you open Safari, you'll be suggested to open that link. If someone sends you a photo, you'll find it in the Photos app. So essentially, shared items will show up in their designated apps. There's also a new Memoji. Now, you can choose outfits for your Memoji and express yourself with new stickers. Represent your look and style with multicolor headwear, and there's also accessibility customizations that now include cochlear implants, oxygen tubes, and soft helmets. Just like iOS 15, there's new focus modes to replace the plain and simple do not disturb. Now, you can set different kinds of focus during different times of day and completely customize them to work the way you want. When you turn it on on one device, it syncs across all your devices. When you're in a focus mode, your status will be automatically displayed in messages and shared with third-party communication apps that you allow. And for truly urgent messages, there's still a way for people to notify you. Notifications have also been redesigned to include contact photos and larger app icons to make them easier to identify. You can also set notifications for various apps to be scheduled, so you won't be notified immediately. Instead, you can choose when to be notified. You can also have a morning summary of all the notifications that you've gotten overnight. The summary is intelligently ordered by priority, with the most relevant notifications at the top. As you may have heard, Safari also has a fresh new look, and with the new feature called Tab Groups, you can save and organize your tabs in the way that works best for you, and switch between them easily. Tab Groups sync across devices, so you have access to your tabs from anywhere. You can also install Safari extensions on your iPad, and just like on Mac, you can choose when the extensions will be active. Maps also has new features. There's an all-new city experience, so you can explore cities with roads, neighborhoods, trees, buildings, and more in great detail. You can see 3D landmarks in both day and dark mode. There's also new transit features and a new interactive globe with new enhanced details for mountain ranges, deserts, forests, oceans, and more. A lot of the time, there's a lot of rich information in your photos, like text and objects. iPadOS 15 uses secure on-device intelligence to help you discover more in your photos. There's now live text in photos, which intelligently unlocks rich and useful information in images, so you can make a call, send an email, or look up directions with just a tap on the highlighted text in a photo. There's also live text translation, and as of now, it understands seven different languages – English, Chinese, French, Italian, German, Portuguese, and Spanish. And with system-wide translation, you can simply tap and then translate. In photos, there's now visual lookup. Visual lookup highlights objects and scenes it recognizes so you can get more information about them. With Visual Lookup, you can quickly learn more about art, 
landmarks, nature, books, and pets simply by tapping a photo on your device or on the web. There's also big improvements to Spotlight Search on the iPad, which now shows you rich results and also gives photos as results. It'll show you more information at a glance, with new rich search results for artists, entertainers, TV shows, and movies, as well as your contacts. And you can now search your photos in Spotlight, and even search based on text in your photos by using live text. There's also an addition to photos, bringing interactive memories, which introduces a new, interactive, immersive interface, along with new memory mixes that let you personalize the look and feel of your story with the song and vibe to match, and you can pick your music from Apple Music. There's also improvements to privacy, and now your iPad will show you an app privacy report which will show you how apps are using the permissions that you've granted them and which will help protect you from unwanted data collection. It gives you more power and control over what you choose to share. There's also an improvement to mail, which hides your IP address, so senders can't link it to your other online activity, and it also prevents them from seeing if and when you have opened their mail. Siri also gains improvement with speech recognition, so whatever audio is being processed is actually being processed locally on your device. This also means that Siri can now perform many tasks without an internet connection, like this. There's also the addition of a huge new feature called Universal Control. Sadly, it's been delayed, but what it's about is you can use a single keyboard or mouse across your Mac and your iPad. There's virtually no setup required, and it works with up to three devices. You can use your mouse or trackpad to drag and drop content between your devices as well. So you can drag something from your iPad onto your Mac. There's also the addition of iCloud Plus, which is a new subscription which adds more features to iCloud, like iCloud Private Relay, Hide My Email, and Expanded HomeKit Secure Video Support. There are quite a few other features that come with iPadOS 15, but the ones that I've mentioned so far are the main ones. If you'd like to know more, I've put a link in the description that will show you a full list of every single feature that's new. Here is the device compatibility list. If your iPad is listed in the given list, you can upgrade to iPadOS 15 today. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope it was really helpful and you enjoyed watching it. If you found it helpful, share this video with your friends, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and also hit that bell icon so you don't miss any notifications for any future uploads. If you're interested, follow me on Instagram and Twitter for updates and posts from me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.